Hello, beloveds. How are you doing today? Namaste. Ashe, loved ones. It's been a while, you guys. I've been through some transitions, transformations, and some grievances uh, on my sabbatical. Please excuse me for, you know, not being here, you know, but I'm here now. I lost my mother last month. Um, I recently just separated from my significant other. So there's been a lot of changes going on with me uh, here lately. And I needed that time to grieve some of those losses that I experienced. And the grief with my mom, who was, you know, had a lot of heavy narcissistic traits, is very complicated. Uh, so they it just comes sporadically. So I'm still trying to deal with that as well. If anyone is interested uh, in knowing more about grieving um, a relationship with, you know, toxic family members or a toxic mother, I'll be happy to chime in on that because it's, it's very complicated grief. Uh, and it, it's been very complicated for me. But enough of that, you know. Uh, I wanted to jump in here and do a quick book review and put my eyes on here. I'm reading so much now. Now, I have a lot of books that's on Kindle now. I have too many books, physical books, to keep in my home. So now I'm just starting to use Kindle and read my books now because I, I have no place to put all these books. I got books everywhere. Now, this book is called The Igungun. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. You guys know I'm not the best person at pronouncing things okay this is a really good book very informative and it it really confirmed a lot of the things that the ancestors was teaching me about plant life and what the orishas told me about how this this substance this uh substance you know, created everything in the universe. Everything in the universe is made of this uh, real refined matter. Uh, so this book is is it's really good, you guys. Even though there are some terms in here that I can't, some words in here that I cannot pronounce, I really was able to keep up with it. Uh, it was an easy read, even though some of the words in here I could not pronounce. So please pardon me if my pronunciations are off. Okay, uh, it's called A Guide to Primordial Ancestral Veneration. And like I told you, with my, can you guys see that? Okay, there you go. With my practice, especially if you come from a family that has a lot of heavy karmic uh, karma on them, or they're stuck in this karmic loop, of ignorance and they, they, they just, they're just not interested in getting out and you're interested in getting out uh do not contact those family members who've recently passed over you know i, I you know especially if there's heavy karma going on with the, with them there was no spiritual understanding going on with them i recommend that you go all the way out to these primordial ancestors because they are going to help you reset and upgrade the family dna with you you are the living blueprint to upgrade the lineage of your ancestors okay it's going to begin with you you might be the only one out of 500 ancestors you know that it clicks with you that you need to do the work that's why i'm always promoting the know thyself class course uh, I'm always promoting shadow work uh, again because you are upgrading the DNA in your lineage. I can't express, you know, you want to go out and do spells, you want to go out and do this, you want to go do out and do that. You may be contributing to the karma of your ancestors if you do not do the work that you need to do. You know, everybody got to do their work. Everybody has to do that work. White, black, Chinese, I don't care. If you're going to be working with your ancestors, you have to put in that work and do work character work on yourself, which we're going to jump in and we're going to talk about this a little bit more. So I'm going to be reading some stuff out of this book. Um, it has about five chapters in there. Uh, with me, I probably read this within an hour, hour and a half. Um, it wasn't a long read at all. 
Okay. But really good information in here. So, uh, the first chapter is what is the Igungun. The second one, the four pillars of Igungun, which we're going to go over there. We're going to go to the first and second chapter. I'm not going to I'm gonna try not to keep you long, but it's a, it's a lot. It's some juicy stuff in here. Uh, and it lets you know, too, that there's 16 ladders to the Igungun. There's 16 rings to the ancestors. There's 16 levels. To the ancestors, you know, I thought that was just really cool the way uh, this author explains this and goes into detail the best he could uh, in English terms. But a lot of the things that he talked about could not be translated into English, you know, so he does his best to give you a definition of the word. OK. Igungun, a practical, a guide to primordial, I'm sorry, Igungun, a guide to primordial ancestral veneration is a is a book that details everything you need to know about Igungun from the Issy's per perspective. And you see, I've seen that word in Christianity, you know, they have it over the cross, over the crucifixion, that uh, I-S, is it I-S-U-E-S? But here he spells it I-S-E-S-E. -S -E. So I've seen it. I always wonder what that meant. I always wonder what that meant. But again, nothing is lost. This, that can be traced back to the ancestors. You, 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 you know, that can be traced back to the ancestors. Discover the real meaning of Igungun and how to connect with them. A lot of people want to know what Igungun Igungun really means. This book is your solution. Is Igungun also masquerade? Are they just ancestors? Are they just collections of bones? All these questions and more are answered. Learn how to connect to your primordial ancestors in a unique way and receive the benefits that come from, the, the, from veneration. This book details step by step for communicating with the Igungun no matter where or who you are. If you do not know your Igungun, this book also explains how you can get it can get it and start your your ancestral connection today this book also shares the true meaning of isis again that word again is coming up again and we're going to go we're going to talk about that a little bit too how to cast the obi in case you are someone who does doesn't know how to cast the obi obi divination is very important it is a piece of additional information for all my readers globally, Igungun, a, a Muaye Wagun, Igungun will balance our lives. May the light of the Olodimere never depart us. I'm going into chapter one. That was the introduction I just uh, read, okay? So chapter one says, what is Igungun? Over many decades, there have been attempts to define the Igungun and was by many wise ones within the outside what we know about Yoruba land today. I am thanking everyone for their great attempt to conceptualize one of the most important aspects of Yoruba's spirituality, culture, and tradition. There are people who define Igungun as masquerade. Some say it is a collection of bones. Some say it is the spirit of the dead, while some simply say they are ancestors. Is Igungun a masquerade? The answer is simply no. What is a masquerade? The Oxford Dictionary defined masquerade as a false show or pretense. I doubt he could have kept up with the masquerade for long. This is far from the reality of Igungun. Igungun is also not a collection of bones, nor is it just the spirit of the dead, because nothing is dead in creation. Like I told you, everything is alive. The ancestors show me everything is alive. And once you get into hoodoo and get into your practice, you will see that everything is alive because a lot of this stuff you'll be using in your hoodoo work, uh, uh, you know, recipes and ingredients you can't get your hand on, you'll start seeing alternatives you can use for your work. You know, it, your mind had just come alive. I, that That's how it was for me. The concept of ancestors is very close to reality of the Igungun, but Igungun is not just an ancestor. 
The issue is persistent desire to transfer terms from ancient native tongues, dialects, and languages into modern English without taking into account their historical context. There are numerous Odua Yoruba words without direct equivalent in English. Instead of attempting to impose a foreign word on them, it is wiser to leave such words alone. Most of the time, it diminished a word's true meaning from its original form. Igungun is simply Igungun. It have no English word. The origin and detail of Igungun I want to share with you in this book was shared with me by my uncle, who is the head of the Igungun cult in my hometown. Oleye Igun Waga Falyayanka Domala. That's his hometown. Coincidentally, Igungun Muwagun was also my Igungun name after my initiation in Igungun. Let, let's look at the etymology of the word Igungun itself. E, the alphabet can be one or those. Gun. It, it means to arrive or land. Example, Sibalo Ying Gule, has your airplane landed? Another example is Aye Yin Agun Rege, your life will be well balanced. Depending on the sentence used, the meaning of the word can change in forms of synonyms. Arrive, landed, balanced are three words. The first goon is igun goon fits most. Goon alignment, orderliness, correct. Igungun means the ones, the ones or those who arrived or landed to put things in alignment or orderliness to help in to help in bringing the necessary balance to the imbalanced world. Igungun, igun are used interchangeably. Sometimes it means the same thing. Igun is short for igungun. Okay, so again, you see him put things in balance, set things straight, get in alignment. That's why, again, I emphasize, again, you guys are going to hear me say this a lot, and I don't hear a lot of people talk about this. They'll tell you do's and don'ts and hoodoo, but nobody really emphasize uh, how important to, it is to do the shadow work, again, to upgrade the DNA. OK, to get rid of some of those uh, behaviors and attitudes that no longer serve the family any longer and that stops them from evolving and he keep, keeps them stuck in the karmic loop. OK, Igungun is not just an ancestor. It is a collection of conscious ancestors, those ancestors who are are more evolved. It is not every Inyan or human spirit that passes away that instantly becomes an Igungun. Yes, some of them belong to the realms of the ancestors, but not Igungun. There are 16 ladders or levels of the ancient primordial ancestor realm. Igungun occupies the highest of, the, of this realm, while many are struggling to get there. Some are on seven 9, 6, 11, etc., depending on the activities on earth. We also have many who are earthbound. They find it very difficult to move on and leave the earth plane. Such souls need more help like people on earth. We must help them get over their attachments. They are attached to the earth. It is not a good thing. It is a very bad thing to be attached to earth. Igungun is anciently referred to as those beings who are at at the highest level of primordial ancestral realm. Isn't that something? They are the collections of ancestors with the most evolved character. Again, we go back to shadow work. It's just the only way you're going to evolve is start looking at some of the attitudes and behaviors that you have inherited from your ancestor. And it's just a byproduct. We're going to pick this stuff up if we, we they raised us. We're going to pick up some of these patterns. So, you know, again, this is about character work as well. They have been able to attain great levels of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This is why they can easily guide, nurture, bring balance, arrive, uh, and correct 
humans on earth whenever humans summon them or at the order of the Oludumare. Gungun originally is the primordial ancestors of all humans on planet earth. They are the first set of humans to set foot on earth. All humans are their seeds. We came from them. They look like us. We look like them. They are the first set of any yen. This is how they pronounce it in the book. To be formed and created by the Eshe of the Adulamare. Igungun is not created or formed by Abatala. I'm going to say I, I may be I mean, maybe pronouncing this wrong, you guys. Uh, it is the human spirit. It is the human spirit that was formed by Abatala, uh, Abotala, you know, or, or Abotala. I've heard it pronounced that way as well. One of the most interesting narrations of how the word Oludumare was formed will be useful for me to share here. One of the stories shared with me by one of my fathers is when the Oludumare created the world, it was formed in a sacred pot. These sacred pots are known as Odu by our primordial ancestors. All human spirits is our visitors of the physical world. Our primordial ancestors call visitors Are. So you have the Oludumare. Oludumare ordered Obatala, Baba Alamo, father of clay, to form he, form Inyan as human spirit in this sacred pot known as Odu. When he's done, Oludumare breathes into the already created clay carcasses the breath of life. And when the human spirit are becoming conscious of themselves, they asked around to know who formed them, but they got no answer. Response from the Oludumare never show anyone itself. That's what makes this human spirit say, well, if we can't see you, we will label you with the work of your hands. Your activities are enough for us to speak about you and your mightiness. You are the owner of the pots, Odu, and use clay to form us through one of your many servants known as Abatala. You shall be called Olo Du, owner of the Adu, to O to Mo Are, the forms the Are. Oladumare in short. That's how the name Oladumare came into existence. Kin in, kin in is the conscious realm for the ones who chose who choose to be a guide to humans in the gross matter. They are they are our ancestral guardians. Our igungun represent our wins, losses, our strengths and weaknesses. They are to remind us of what needs to be done to heal ourselves. You heard it here, okay? Shadow work again. You're going to hear me say it again. You can't get away from it. I don't know. Whoever's doing ancestors working, you ain't getting this deep in this. Are you evolving? Are you developing? You know, I can't emphasize this much. You heard it here, you guys. They remind us of what needs to be done to heal ourselves so that we can become a better Enian through the development of our spirit. Okay, you heard it here. Okay, so that was in chapter one. The above ado let us understand the journey of the Igungun from their abode to planet Earth. Before the arrival of the Igungun, the Earth had no presence of humans. The Earth went through a development also before it got habitable for spirits. Varieties of Irimolo and Marimole have been on earth nurturing everything and the Igungun had been prepared by the Oludumare to be first set of spirits seized on earth. So Igunguns are the collective spirits of conscious ancestors who occupy the most sacred and developed space in the ancestral realm called Kin-In-Kin-In. 
The sentence Igungun, Are, Oran, Ken in, Ken in is very common, especially whenever the word Igungun is mentioned. A lot of people always chant that to the Igun, Igungun whenever they cite one. Generally, it is literally translated to Igun, Igungun, residents of heaven or native of heaven. But in reality, kin in, kin in, as a word, means something deeper, more sacred than just heaven. Kin in, kin in is the name of this that sacred space in the highest ring of ancestral realms where Igungun reside. Humans do not come from this realm. We came from the realm beneath it. Each realm is representing a stage of each human spirit, evolutionary stage. There are 16 rings of ancestor realms. The purest of them all is kin in, kin in. Aside from the above verse, there are several verses of Ifa that state the journey of arrival of Igungun from their realm to the physical world. You heard it there. It says, meanwhile, before the arrival of the Igungun, Different divinities have been sent to planet Earth to come and take very good care of it, to come and make the Earth ready for the arrival of human spirits. Obatola, Odudua, Una, Usun, Orenfe, and all kinds of many entities have been ordered by the Olodumare to prepare the Earth. All the details of the movements from their realms to planet Earth is in different Ifa verses, which I will be sharing some of it. And then he goes through some of it there. Like I said, this is a really good book, a short read, but it's packed with good information, really good information. And this was all in chapter one. I'm going to move on. I thought this this is one of my favorite ones because uh, a lot of the things uh, I learned, we're going to put you going to go over there in a minute was from my ancestral mothers, and we're going to go over that in just a minute. What is Issy? See, we have seen this word, but it's spelled different, a little different in Christianity. Look at this word here. Okay? We've seen this word. And again, we can connect this word back to our ancestor, to our primordial ancestors. Okay? It says the word Issy is a word spoken directly to the divinities. For the first time when the Iran Mole failed at their mission on earth. That's what that is. Every single divinity assigned by the Oladumare to nurture the developing planet earth has a specific mission and purpose to fulfill. But when they got to earth, instead of facing their business, handling their mission and purpose, they were all catching fun, merry, and enjoying the goodness of the earth without working and adding their own creativity to the earth for it to be a more beautiful and habitable place. It was Ormamilia who was doing the exact thing assigned to do. See, a lot of us, we, we got a purpose here, but we get distracted with other things. We don't do the character work we need to do on ourselves to evolve so we can get to the next level. He enjoyed it. Uh, he enjoyed it also, but he never allowed the enjoyment to take away his life purposes. Other divinities were mocking and making jest of him throughout. They said, On Amelia, why are you disturbing yourself? The earth is always beautiful, and the Olabudumare has already provided everything for us to eat and have fun with. Stop stressing yourself and join us. Or Namilia reminded them of their mission on earth, but they all shut him down and pushed him aside. What does that sound like? It sounds like, you know, uh, our family, when they find out that we were on this spiritual mission, that we're trying to heal and we're trying to upgrade, we're discouraged from doing that. That's certainly, um, I could really relate to this when I was reading this. On the media continues his work humbly. And after a while, the time is up for every one of them to give details of their work back to, to the Oladumare. They all went back to the Oladumare. And when they get to the palace of, of Oladumare, all the Oromole gave their records to the Oladumare. And Oladumare was not pleased with that. 
On the media gave his own record. Ola Demaray was very happy and over and over to him Igba Iwa, the calabash of character. Again, do that character work. You see what I'm saying? It's character work. Uh and I wish they would, you know, talk about this more in the Christianity because that's what this is all about, doing the character work. And we we miss uh the big biggest healing. Uh, when we don't do the character work as a sign as a sign that he will continue to be the leader of the uh, Romole and continue to order them. When the Romole saw that they got sad and challenged Oladumare why he gave Ornamilia such honor. And Abatala said he was older than him. Abaluyue said the same. And the Oromole started claiming positions. Oladumare replied to them, It is true that most of you are older than Olamilia, but he did what he needed to do. Remember when I told you all to go into the developing earth and assign each one task and duty to fulfill therein, none of you carry out the duty except Oromilia. Oromilia. So again, we are in charge. We have to do the character work, and that goes back to commit. When you know we're wearing when um, the scales, the mayat is wearing the scales. Again, we're wearing the scales. How much work have you done on yourself? How much have you done in repairing the DNA line in your lineage? You know, do the work, beloved. Do the work. Okay, so let me go. Uh, um, on here, Oladume started pointing hand, uh, pointing hands at them. It see, it says the etymology of it is is work, mission, purpose, duty. Say is to do, fulfill. So it it breaks down that meaning of the word isis, and you see that word. You'll see that word over the uh over the crucifixion cross. It's in small little letters. And we haven't paid attention to it, but that is some of the things that uh, that we really need to pay attention to. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go from there. I think I talked enough about that. I want to keep you guys long. I have a lot of stuff marked in this book. Okay. Here's another one I don't want to pass up. Our primordial ancestors, the Gugun, became students of nature automatically by studying the moon, stars, planets, etc. The unseen forces of nature and the Irumole, who stand as parents in a way, started teaching them the secret of, universe, of the universe and keep developing. Not as parents as we know it today, but they are the first teachers. They taught them everything they needed to know about earth and more. Fast forward to ancient Yoruba land. There was a period when Iro and Iji is a prefix to human names in Yoruba land. We have Erosian, Erotunde, Iji Kunle, Iji Lola, etc. Depending on the dialects and tongues in Jamire that reflected the Ifa, Ifa corpus of Ornamilia, student came as the direct descendants of Ornamilia. The Ornamilia, Ornamilia referred to here was the divinity, the first Ornamilia, not the recent ones we have as Orisha. So these were the first primordial beings. Meanwhile, before the arrival of the primordial ancestors, Igungun, there was nothing like death. The divinity of death has not been able to come to the planet Earth. All divinities spent centuries on Earth. They never die. And they were able to travel to the beyond and back to the Earth easily. The birth of the primordial ancestors, Igungun, opens the portal for death on planet Earth. On this Ifa says in Odu or Yeku or I thought that was, you know, that's very, very interesting. Human spirits have who have been waiting to come and experience Earth for their spiritual development was able 
to was able to planet Earth was able to go to planet Earth through their primordial ancestors. They are spirit germs. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll get into that later. Spirit germs that are seeking development. Aku death is part of their destiny. They are not like their parents and grandparents that are from the divine realm of primordial spiritual. Death was so so new to them. What's this? They all went to Ornamilia to seek wisdom because they knew that he usually know what they do not know. Ornamilia replied to them, you do not you do not all understand everything you possess. Wealth, clothes, children, foods, farms, farm, farm produces, and all that you all have is not blessing in real sense of it. Death is only only blessing. Oladumare gave your seeds. They all chorused how? Or the media says, we all have a journey to make. Come back in seven days' time and let's go on a journey. On this, the seven days, they all went on the journey. As they got get to a flowing fresh river, or Namilia used the water to wash his face and hands and legs and drank from it and told the others to do the same. They all proceeded and they got to another river and it that it not flowing, it was stagnant. Full of dirt, dead leaves, and animals, and smelly or the million now said, let's do the exact same thing we did at the bank of the first river here also. They said, ha, huh? or the million, how can you say this? This water is too dirty, smelling. In fact, it must not touch anyone's skin, let alone use to wash face and rinse bodies and legs. Or your million replied, yes, that's your reply. How? He said, human spirit that come to earth and die is like a flowing river, beautiful and answering the flow and movement of life. The one who doesn't die is like a river that's not flowing and it will become like the river you, you do not want to use because it is dirty and smelly. You all think we die. No, we do not. We only change form when the body is not good enough for the spirit. Within the spirit leaves for us not to be stagnant is why we must pass away to get a new body. This is why a newborn baby cries immediately when they see humans on earth and says, ah, so this is how my skin will later turn to be. That's when the immoral and primordial ancestors got enlightened on the importance of Aiku which they later embraced instead of fear. Okay, so I want to talk about this river a little bit. You know, that's interesting that he talks about that because uh, each time I've came in contact with a family member who passed away, I have been drawn to this river, uh, this this water. Uh, you know, when my aunt, she took me to this river, it took her three days to patch me into her. But when she finally did it, uh, you know, again, I, I kept seeing all this water, all this water, all this water. And I was like, oh, gosh, what is all this water? And it was it was like it was like the ocean. It was just, you know, it was just a violently going every direction. It was just moving everywhere. Uh, and, and she contacted me uh, and, and this was a dream. And then uh, three days before my mom died, which I think she was transitioning, then I had a dream again. She took me to water. She took me to water again. I saw this. My mom, she was in water. I've never seen her like that before. But I knew that she was free and she was on her evolution journey. Uh, she took me to this water. And she was surrounded by vegetation. And she had a crown of flowers on her head and this beautiful flowing gown on. And she looked very happy. And she called my name. Then she jumped in the water. Uh, as she jumped in the water, her gown changed. So, yes, I mean, that water, you know, I don't know why it's like that with me. But for me, uh, usually, uh, I'm seeing a pattern here. When my loved ones pass over and I have a connection with them, they tend to, uh, I tend to experience water in my dreams. I'm always near this river. Or, you know, river or this ocean 
when uh, I come in contact with my family members. So, yeah, I don't know if that's for everyone, but this certainly has been my experience. Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, I think this is my favorite. Is this one of my favorite? Oh, yes, this is my favorite one because I work with the ancestral mothers so strong. They have taught me so much. Uh, and I'm constantly working with them. You know, uh, they have taught me so much. I, I, you know, go to your ancestry mothers. You know, that's where it all starts at. And this book kind of confirmed. It confirms my experience with working with the ancestral mothers. You know, uh, oh, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful thing to be in alignment and on the right path when you start uh, experiencing these synchronicities you know that your ancestors are leading you. And that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. You know, I'm being directed and guided and taught by my ancestors using my own intuitive abilities. So it, it's just a beautiful thing. So let me jump in here. This is the uh, chapter two, the four pillars of the Igungun. The ancient four pillars show the narrations how Igungun was arranged in sublime manner. The four Pillars of Igungun should be known. This will help us develop, nurture, cherish, and maintain communication channel through libations, prayers, incantation, offerings, sacrifices with those who have paved the way for us to be where we are standing and from who we inherit qualities and defects, potentialities, limitations, and access to the divine authority through which to explore or exploit our inner potential. I'm telling you, you got to go within. You got to go within. You got to go within. Don't get distracted, beloved. The Igun, the Igungun Aye, Ayami, which I'm going to talk about now. The first, first on the pillars of Igungun, Igungun Aye, who are the Igungun Aye, they are the primordial mothers. And you heard it here, it said the first on the pillars is something how I, I, I really gravitated towards their story because they were here first and they were telling me all these experiences um, that they went through. Known as the Ayami. The Ayami is the feminine energy that is nourishing the planet Earth. Without them, nothing will work. The Yami is the mask of primordial ancestors on planet Earth. In the sacred Adu Ase Meje, the Adu of the mothers, Ose Eleye, the Ose, the owner of, of the birds, and I love birds. I love birds. I had a bird, I, I had another confirmation uh, from my ancestor mothers because this bird was trying to build a nest in my mailbox. And that's supposed to be a good sign uh, when the birds build a nest in your window or next to your door. Uh, that's a good sign from the ancestors. Ifa detail how the Igungun Aye was tormenting Abatala when he was inside the Iku, Igun, and none of the Imorale was able to accommodate him because they were not sure who was in the Iku. It was only Ornamilla who accommodated the Ab accommodated Abatala, got his secret and, and saved him from the Ayami, the Igungun Iye. Why, why is Igungun Aye Ayami? Because they are the ones that birthed us. And the Oludumare already gave them the power to oversee us human spirits. As guide to our path, anytime we want to go astray from the path of Lodumare, the Ayami will be there to teach us lessons. They spank us when necessary. The cosmic primordial mothers are our first teachers. They seek to always bring balance into our lives so that we can evolve. The intellect of man is a great tool meant to navigate the physical world, while the intuition is a great tool to navigate the other worlds. Attempt in explaining intuitive phenomena with one's intellect will lead to sawdust 
mental illusion and deprivation of creativity. The Ayemi are not witches, nor are they also wizards. The same way with Ushu is not Satan. In society like ours, where the patriarchal nature, nature of Western ethics predominates issues of femininity, empowerment, and the role of women are constantly being discussed and fussed over, the importance of women in Western society is often underestimated, legally restrained, and socially controlled to their detriment. Our ancient o Odua, Yoruba ancestors, were extremely considerate of women and their welcome and, and their welcome importance as mothers to the balance of society. Ifa, which is the world's first and original African retrieval knowledge bank, detailed how and who the Iyami were and was like everything else about life and beyond. According to the Odu Osei Meje, and the Os Osei Otura, the Ayami is the one of the sacred names of the divine entity that we know as feminine power, the gender identified as femaleness, that which entails all the characteristics of femininity. African women exhibit the unique characteristics on human level that exist in the divine. This energy called the Ayamis contain, maintain, and treasure the secret of life and can shift the scales of the world order and balance. They are that which brings forth humanity is also the force that removes or constrains it. Intellectually, the energy behind this sacred portal of life is unfathomable. They keep constant watch on the powers that be on every level of society who pollute the water, streams, ocean, forest, atmosphere, and indeed the earth herself. The characteristics and virtues of a Yemis, according to Ifa, is not the same as that of the Wicca Western witches. Such characteristics only flow with the ancestral code name given to the divine feminine energy among all original Africans on the continent and Africans beyond. Like among the Igbo, Igbo we have the Iyembo Ekpe. Among the Mende, they have the Sendi and Mundu. Apparently for many decades, the Adu, the Adua Yoruba land, our academicians, aided by Judeo-Christian Mohammedan remnants among us had been using Western words like witches in different journals and academic works, plus Nollywood works out of ignorance. As an author, I know this is hard, but, but for future sake, I am suggesting that since brilliant language expressiveness can be found in even Yoruba language, we should endeavor to keep some words as it is in its original forms so as not to lose its essence. A real woman, real women and females possess a certain kind of power that is extraordinary and phenomenal. They carry the essence of Iyami within their being and the degree of Iyami is what defines the feminine nature of women. Igungun Aye brings peace, health, well-being, and fertility to all. As the ultimate in reciprocity, the energy of the Igungun Aye may also bring drought, fertility, stir war, and illness when the laws of the Lodumere is, is disobeyed. You know, uh, I thought this was a good one. I'm not going to keep you long. I've kept you long enough. Uh, get the book. I think this is very, you know, it confirmed a lot of the things that the ancestral mothers were teaching me and how I've been navigating my journey. I hope you found this book insightful, informative, uh, and it helped you, you know, uh, understand more about your spiritual journey and more about the ancestors. I hope to see you at the live that's coming up this month. It should be posted there. I think it's the 20th something. I also have a Facebook live coming up on the 19th at 7 p.m. If you want to join that as well. So, you know, I'm going to be back here more often now. I've settled in and I can't. I'm so excited to do more readings for you guys. 
Uh, and we're offering new products on our website. We've moved our website to Shopify. So there's a lot of transitions, transformations, and changes going on with us. So we are only evolving and getting better. Uh, and again, if you need me, you're free to book a session with me as well. Thank you for being here with me today. Light, love, namaste. I say love one.